The Young Tad Research Partnership Platform held its fifth meeting on 11th of July 2014 at the Play de Nation Geneva with participation of over 85 people from competition authorities, consumer protection agencies, universities and research institutes. Opening statements were given by Hassan Kakaya, head of the Competition and Consumer Policies Branch, and Graham Mott, coordinator of the UNCTAD RPP. The first part of the meeting dealt with ongoing and completed projects. Alexandra Kamich, PhD candidate at the Toulouse School of Economics, presented the findings of her research project entitled Measuring the Economic Effects of Cartels in Developing Countries. The goal of this project was to identify the level of economic harm caused by cartels in developing countries. The research used a data set compiled for the years 1995 to 2013 across a number of developing countries. Data was aggregated and related to GDP to estimate harm to the economy. Based on this data, the hypothetical market conditions without cartelization were simulated using an econometric methodology and compared to existing conditions that are characterized by the presence of cartels. This allowed for the calculation of price overcharges and output effects. Results from this process show that overcharge of cartels vary between 20 and 30%, with aggregate excess charging accounting for losses of up to 1% of GDP, which justifies the attention and intervention of competition agencies. Ms. Kimmich was keen to highlight that these results represent minimum figures due to the issue of missing data. Many competition authorities in developing countries simply do not record the relevant type of pricing data and only use market share or profit indicators as evidence. In the absence of the project coordinator, Deborah Healy, senior lecturer at the University of New South Wales, Graham Mott, coordinator of the UNCTAD RPP, launched the first publication in the UNCTAD RPP publication series entitled Competitive Neutrality and its Application in Selective Developing Countries. Competitive neutrality policy is very important because this mechanism ensures a level playing field for competition where government businesses may have advantages merely because of their government ownership or control. Systematic consideration of the issues is essential to determine the most appropriate method to implement competitive neutrality within a jurisdiction. In this context, the project explores competitive neutrality issues in China, Malaysia, Vietnam, India and also in international agreements. Professor Eleanor Fox of New York University Law School, presenting the findings of the RPP project on competition law in the state, conducted with Deborah Healy. Firstly, it was pointed out that the issue addressed by this project is the extent to which competition law, and not just policy, covers state anti-competitive conduct and measures. Often the state is the biggest barrier for competition enforcers. Professor Fox emphasised that a principal challenge is how to draw a line between rogue acts, unwise anti-competitive acts and legitimate acts. To this there is an important normative part, for example, how far should the law go, or a set of principles of which to abide by. As well as presenting some of the results gathered from the questionnaires distributed to selected competition authorities, Professor Fox suggested that the project may be further extended and proposed to go forward with UNCTAD to discuss the promotion of six norms. It was suggested that it would be extremely useful to invite UNCTAD members to present examples of how to deal with state activities and to include these in the UNCTAD model law. In this presentation, Ms. Marianella Lopez Galdos of George Washington University described the Benchmarking Competition Systems Project, which carried out a study that benchmarked the major institutional characteristics of competition authorities. Questionnaires defining the institutional characteristics were circulated amongst competition authorities worldwide, and responses were received from 121 competition systems, encompassing more than 125 competition agencies, with findings covering institutional characteristics such as independence, accountability, governance, architecture, policy duties, policy-making agents, portfolio of policy instruments and decision-making functions. Ms Lopez Galdos reported that much work had been carried out in the last year in clarifying and refining questionnaire responses, as some agencies had misreported. Other parts of the UNCTAD Research Partnership Platform meeting allowed for the presentation of partners' research. Professor Anu Bradford from Columbia Law School presented a project with the goal of explaining what drives different competition laws and enforcement priorities around the world. For this purpose, the project is collecting information about countries' competition laws and enforcement resources and practices. I will aggregate this data into a large data set that will allow for the detection of larger trends in laws and enforcement practices, both globally and regionally. In addition to gaining an enhanced understanding of competition laws and enforcement around the world, 
The project is measuring the extent to which countries cooperate with each other on competition matters. For this purpose, the project is collecting and analysing the texts of cooperation agreements among competition enforcement agencies, as well as examining whether countries include provisions on antitrust laws in their preferential trade agreements with their trading partners. This allows for the measurement of the extent to which anti-competitive practices are perceived as being global in their nature and to gain an understanding of the extent to which enforcement activity takes place across borders. Ivo Krizic and Lei Wang from the University of Lucerne presented their research which aims to analyse the internal and external drivers in the formation of new competition regimes. Drawing on the concepts of external governance and international policy diffusion, the presented paper takes the enactment of China's anti-monopoly law as a case study to scrutinise the various channels through which emerging competition policy regimes have been shaped. By highlighting the diversity of sources in domestically driven rule selection, the paper makes a first step towards capturing the complex diffusion process in international competition policy. Their presenters concluded by stating that there is simply not a direct transplant between authorities. Dimitar Ilyev, from the Commission of Protection of Competition in Bulgaria, presented the Balkans Comparative Study, a comparative overview of the Balkan competition regimes. The presentation began with an introduction to the establishment and composition of eight Balkan competition authorities. The study presented explores a wide range of issues, including the competence and independence of competition authorities, comparisons of records of enforcement on prohibited agreements, abusive conduct and merger reviews, comparisons on priority setting, investigative powers, requirements for inspection and powers during inspections, comparisons on judicial review and action for damage, and comparisons on competition advocacy. Omar Jobs from the African Competition Forum outlined some of the initiatives of the forum's research, including competition and market assessments for critical economic sectors such as cement, sugar and poultry, the promotion of international cooperation and linking research to training capacity building. Regarding the market assessments, it was stated that these goods were chosen as there is a huge infrastructure deficit in Africa or there are essential household consumable supplies. These assessments cover the jurisdictions of Botswana, Kenya, Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania and Zambia. The RPP meeting also included a special interactive session from the Journal of Antitrust Enforcement. Ariel Azraki from the Oxford University Centre for Competition Law and Policy presented a review of the activities of the Journal of Antitrust Enforcement. The presentation began by outlining the objectives behind the journal and continued with an introduction of the Antitrust Enforcement Symposium, which aims to collect and capture unusual features of competition policy, many of which are related to the developmental needs of competition authorities. In total, a survey poses 44 questions, and as well as gathering information, it is hoped that this process triggers authorities to think on both their role and operation, not solely the goals of the authority. The survey covers issues such as agency appraisal, capacity building, objectives, the board and staff, media, independence and personal experience. The special session continued with a panel discussion of the symposium, with a panel comprised of Professor Karen Beaton Wells from the University of Melbourne Law School, Mr. Tembinkosi Bonakeli, Commissioner of the South Africa Competition Commission, Professor Eleanor Fox of the New York University Law School, and Mr. Pablo Marquez, Executive Director of the Colombian Commission for Communications Regulation. The final part of the RPP meeting was devoted to the presentation of new project proposals. Herbert Desano from Indicopi in Peru presented a project on the convergence between competition law and intellectual property and the relationship of these two from the perspective of Peru's experience. Firstly, the structure of Peru's competition law and IP institutions were outlined, and it was stated that developing countries experience a greater number of problems in the area of this convergence. Competition law and intellectual property share the common goal of promoting innovation and enhanced consumer welfare due to the inclusion of technical progress as an essential process of competition. This has led to a new vision of the relationship between the two disciplines, noting that although there may be some apparent conflict in the short term, in the long term objectives are in harmony. Mr. Tisano concluded that the interface between competition law and intellectual property does not mean there is a collision between the two. In order to develop public policy to harmonize this relationship, Indicopy has created the School of Competition and Intellectual Property, a space for reflection and discussion. Neve Dunn from the Centre for European Legal Studies at the University of Cambridge presented a project on the role of technical assistance and began 
by outlining the concept of technical assistance and the distinction between it and capacity building. The project proposed will explore the motivation of the providers and recipients of technical assistance and a major target of the political aspects of this research will be to address questions such as what is the role of technical assistance in developing competition policy worldwide? Who are the main players and how does it impact on the development of competition policy? Finally, it was stated that the overall aim of the project would be to understand technical assistance not only as a technical phenomenon but also a political one. The last presentation of the meeting saw Tanya Zuniga Fernandez of CPIC in SN University in Lima in Peru present her project proposal on competition and concentration in Latin American emerging economies. The objective of this project is to identify the performance outcomes and difficulties Latin American emerging economies have to face when applying merger controls in different economic sectors. The research will seek to establish an analysis and in-depth comparison the characteristics of merger control regimes applied to a number of Latin American emerging economies. Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia and Peru have been selected for this survey.